Summary of the Rent Collector by Cameron Wright Stung Minchi is the biggest garbage dump in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. It is where Sang Lai, her husband Ki Lim, and their baby son Nisi live. Like everyone else in Stung Minchi, they make a meager living by going through new trash to find things that can be recycled and selling them to a scrap dealer. A group of teens beat Ki up and stole his money one day while he was picking up trash. He got a serious head wound and had to go to the local clinic. So Peep Sin, Stung Minchi's old, drunk, and angry rent collector, comes to Sang Lee's one-room hut while he is away to demand that they pay their rent for the month. Sang Lai can't pay, and So Peep says she will kick them out unless she sees a picture book for kids that Ki found in the trash earlier that day sitting in their hut. So Peep holds the book and reads quietly through its pages. Sang Lai gives it to her as a gift because it knows how much it means to her. In silence, the old woman walks away with the book, and Ki comes back with a wrapped head and a knife that he bought with their last bit of money to protect himself from the gangs. When So Peep comes back later, she forgives Sang Lai and Ki for not paying their rent because she thanked them for the book. Sang Lai gets up the nerve to ask So Peep to teach her to read so that she and her son can have hope even though they are poor. So Peep finally agrees, but only if Sang Lai agrees to study very hard and buy So Peep good alcohol every week. So Peep misses their first lesson, which makes Sang Lai less motivated. But So Peep shows up while Sang Lai is using a traditional healing method on her son to try to get rid of his constant diarrhea and sickness, and she says they will start tomorrow. Sang Lai is shocked by the rent collector's quick act of humility. She tells So Peep as she goes that she can read, which is unusual in Stung Minchi, and that she used to teach literature at a university in Phnom Penh. So Peep's lessons help Sang Lai learn the Khmer alphabet quickly and soon she can put the sounds together to read words. This makes her very happy, but Ki is less excited because he doesn't see the point of reading or why Sang Lai puts so much effort into it. But during one of their lessons, So Peep is half drunk and throws up outside. The blood in her vomit shows that she is very sick. Sang Lai begs So Peep to teach her literature after she learns to read simple lines. Sang Lai doesn't really know what literature is, though. Again, So Peep says no, saying that writing needs both the mind and the heart, and she has spent all her drinking years trying to stay away from such emotional involvement. The old woman finally gives in, though, and tells Sang Lai that So Peep might teach her about literature if she can find a piece of literature in the dump within a few days. Sang Lai looks everywhere but can't find anything literary until the night before her next class, when her cousin tells her a poem that has been told verbally in her family for generations. So Peep barely agrees to teach Sang Lai about literature when she sees the poem. They will have to move quickly through the lessons, though, because So Peep is leaving Stung Minchi soon. A young boy named Lucky Fat comes into Sang Li's hut while she is cleaning it one day and begs her to help him. Mally, a girl, is hiding in his hut. Lack of a parent and an older brother in a gang put Mally at risk of being sold as a child prostitute. The next few days, Sang Lai, her mother Lina, and Ki help Lucky Fat hide Mally from the gang members who are looking for her. So Peep gives Sang Lai money to help Mally get away from Stung Minchi and stay with a good family in Phnom Penh who will look out for her. So Peep keeps teaching Sang Lai about literature, showing her that it can teach her about life, hope, and being a hero who gives up everything for others. During her lessons, So Peep always gives the impression that she is drinking to forget who she used to be and running away from something in her past. Even so, the teacher is slowly losing her tough exterior. More and more times, Sang Lai tries different ways to heal Nisi, but nothing works and he gets weaker. Sang Lai, on the other hand, dreams that Stung Minchi is covered in snow and that she can see her home province, Prey Veng, and a guy she used to know greeting her. So Peep tells Sang Lai about her dream during one of their classes. So Peep talks about how important dreams are to writing and tells Sang Lai to think about it to figure out what it really means. Because Lucky Fat helped Mally, gang members beat him up and messed up his hut as punishment. The people in Stung Minchi are now more likely to stand up to the gangs, even though they were afraid before. 
He is happy because he has been trying for weeks to get other people to fight the gangs, but his happiness fades when the locals kill one of the gang members. Both he and Sang Lai know that the boy was only a teenager and was Mali's bigger brother. He and Sang Lai are both scared, and Sang Lai thinks that, just like in books, good and evil, heroes and villains are not as easy as they seem at first. When Sang Lai asks So Peep if she can read the kid's book she gave her, So Peep says yes and gives the book to Nisei. So Peep says that the book was actually written about her and her son by a close friend from college. That night, after So Peep leaves, Sang Lai finds out that her teacher has been hiding the fact that she is dying of cancer. During their next literature lesson, though, Sang Lai is getting angry with So Peep about her sickness when Sang Li's mother runs in and tells her that Nisi passed out and is now not responding at all. Sang Lai is scared and rushes him to the nearby clinic, but it's closed. Luckily, a kind cab driver takes her to a modern children's hospital. Nisi is taken from Sang Lai by a nurse. Sang Lai spends the night in the waiting room and in the morning meets a doctor who tells her Nisi will be fine but that he was very thirsty. When Sang Lai finally gets home from the hospital, she falls asleep and thinks of Stung Minchi covered in snow. In her dream, she sees the man from her home province again and knows him as the village's healer. When Sang Lai wakes up, she is sure that she needs to take Nisi to pray Veng to see the healer, even though it will take a long time. She gets Ki to go with her. As they are about to leave Stung Minchi, So Peep shows up to say goodbye. She looks very sick and says she wishes they had finished their lessons. Sang Lai says they will start studying literature again when she gets back, but So Peep doesn't think she will make it that long. To get to Prey Veng, Sang Lai, Ki, and Nisi take a bus and a boat. They stay with Sang Li's extended family for a few days. Sang Lai takes her son to see the healer, who makes something that looks like black tar and injects it into Nisi's arms. After the healing process was over, Ki and Sang Lai went back to Stung Minchi. When they got there in the middle of the night, they found that their hut had been broken into while they were gone, and they lost everything. But when Sang Lai wakes up the next morning, she sees that Nisi looks healthy and busy. Sang Lai decides that if their child is finally healed, they will have won everything, even if they have lost everything. In the days to come, Sang Lai and Ki's friends will work together to make up for what they lost. People haven't seen So Peep in days, and Sang Lai is afraid the worst. Lucky Fat does show up though, with a notebook full of writings that So Peep wrote herself so that Sang Lai could keep studying. The notebook also has a letter from So Peep saying goodbye because she is leaving to die somewhere but doesn't say where. A person who works at the local hospital also says that So Peep could have lived with her cancer if she had gone out of the country to get treatment, but she decided to stay and die so that Sang Lai could finish school. The last essay in the notebook is read by Sang Lai. It is written by So Peep and tells about the events in her life that led her to Stung Minchi. She lived in a rich part of Phnom Penh with her husband Sam Nang, her son, and a housekeeper named So Peep Sin the real So Peep Sin, when she was a professor. Her real name was Sarian. But when the Khmer Rouge attacked the city in 1975 with the goal of killing all educated or smart people, Sarian's housekeeper claimed to be the professor and told the soldiers that the real Sarian was just a housekeeper named So Peep Sin. She did this to save Sarian's life. They killed the real maid, Sarian's husband, and her son, but they didn't kill the fake housekeeper. Someone else died in Sarian's place, and she felt pain and guilt for the rest of her life. She kept the name So Peep Sin. When Sang Lai finishes her story, she is both sad and sure that her teacher, So Peep, got the story wrong. She wants to find her teacher so that she can show her how valuable she is. The people who own Stung Minchi might be able to help Sang Lai and Ki find So Peep since she was their rent collector. But when they go to the Ministry of Land and Records, they find out that So Peep wasn't just the rent collector, she owned all of Stung Minchi. She gave her own home to Sang Lai and Ki and the rest of the land to the housekeeper's family who is still alive. Sang Lai finds this family, the Sin family, and learns that they don't know her teacher but have been getting anonymous money packages every month for the last few decades, 
which has paid for their schooling and helped them get out of poverty. After reading more of Sopeep's writings, Sang Lai finally understands that she must have died in the house she used to live in. Sang Lai finds Sopeep on her deathbed with the Sin family and Ki. The new owner of the house she used to live in has been kind enough to welcome her. Sang Lai tells Sopeep about the Sin family, who have come to thank and respect her for her kindness. Sang Lai then sits with her as she dies. Sang Lai makes up a story about Sopeep, who seemed drunk and angry but was really kind and helpful, and tells it to the other villagers when she gets back to Stung Minchi. About the author. Cameron Wright grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah. He also went to Westminster College and got his master's degree in writing and public relations there. Wright started to get an MBA, but he quit to start his writing career. Wright's first book, Letters for Emily, came out in 2001. It won a Reader's Choice Award, was chosen by several book clubs, and has been released in many countries. Wright took a 10-year break from writing after the success of his first book to focus on his business and design job. During that time, he owned several stores and worked as a designer for the McCall Pattern Company in New York with his wife. One of Wright's four children made a video about the Stun Minchi dump in Cambodia. Wright then went back to writing and used the story from the documentary to create the book The Rent Collector. The book came out in 2012 and won the Whitney Award for Best Novel of the Year. It was also nominated for the International Dublin Literary Award. Wright then wrote The Other Side of the Bridge in 2018 and The Orphan Keeper in 2016. He lives in Salt Lake City, Utah, with his wife Allison. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.